I had a lot of songs already planned. You know, I was like, okay, so this is going to be good stuff for this next album where I'm going to be at in my life. But I didn't know exactly what the whole feeling was going to be or the basis was going to be until I wrote I Don't Dance. And so when I wrote I Don't Dance, this is the one I did produce by myself. The whole production around it had a little bit of everything I wanted. It had some just broken down acoustic vocal, you know, spacey stuff. And then it had some, you know, a little bit of hip production around it. And I felt like where I was at in my life personally, it said, this is, this is who I am right now for this album space. In country music and maybe all the other genres too, but I know in country that a lot of times labels you know, they put you in a box and they say, well, you can't do that because it's not going to work at Country Radio or this or that. And this is, a... but to me, I love all kind of music. And most people do, you know, most people, you know, love little things about all kind of genres. And so I love R&B, I love rock, I love blues and bluegrass. And, you know, all of that stuff I wanted to show. Um, a record inspired me, uh, the, the Bruno Mars, uh, album that that he had out, uh, Unorthodox Jukebox. Mm -hmm. What I loved about that record is what I took to try to do on my record. He took classic sounds, right, of all the music that he loved, classic sounds, and, and he mixed them in with, you know, new, hip, you know, innovative stuff. And for me, I wanted to do that because I love an old school steel guitar, you know, because I'm a country man, and a banjo, and an acoustic guitar, but, but I also you know, hear some stuff in my head that's not quite so classic country. So I wanted to be able to melt all that together. And then I'm also kind of a dramatic person. So I like some of the, the drama in the music, you know, and uh, that's kind of what I'm drawn to. So overall, I wanted to be able to kind of hit all the points of the music that I've, I've listened to my whole life. And, and, uh, and, but also just let there be a thread of me through it, just the country boy from South Carolina. I am a, a kid that was born and raised on chicken farms and 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 uh, pulling wire and electrician and in the south and a country guy. That's just who I am. There's no way to get around that. <laughs> I'm a redneck. <laughs> but there's so much more music in me um, that I want to I want to share that. I don't want to have to not get that out of me. And uh, I, I can't. I have to get it out of me. And then I also wanted to say things that were true. Um, and so, you know, even left and right, it was some, a letter to my wife. You were always the only one. I've made mistakes, you know. And my wife was even like, you know, I don't want people to think that we're having problems that we, we, we went through. I said, well, baby, everybody has. And so I want to connect with people on a real level. We've been out with Luke Bryan um, all year since January. It's called the That's My Kind of Night Tour. And uh, uh, this is his first big major tour he's done. and. We're so proud to be out. I've, I've been buddies with Luke. We came to town almost on the same day in 2001. So our careers have just been kind of, we've been watching each other and being buddies and forever. And I've done a lot, I've done a few tours with him. So that's the cool thing. The coolest thing about this tour is that even the, the other guy on the tour opening up, Cole Swindell, um, he was, he grew up with Luke Bryan. So it's three buddies out there getting to make music on a major tour. And so I think that shows. Luke gets us both out during his set. And I mean, Luke got me out the other night to do a song that he did, that neither one of us sang. I wrote a song called Crazy Girl for another band called the Eli Young Band. And Luke played piano. I sang that during Luke's set. Like, we're just having fun playing music. And that, I think, really shows to the, to the fans. And that's what they love. You know, I, I saw a bunch of tweets saying, it just caught me off guard and blew, me mind, blew my mind that, that Lee and Luke are doing an Eli Yang, Young Band song, you know, I wrote it so there's a connection there, but, but still, it's just not expected and that kind of stuff is fun to do off the cuff. A lot of times a headlining artist will give you a certain amount of stage that you can use or a certain amount of lights that you're supposed to use. But Luke, at the beginning of this tour, was like, Luke, by, Lee, by the way, whatever I got out there is yours. You use it like, it's for, th we're doing this for them, for the fans, so why would I hinder your show in any way, shape, or form? So to me, that's just a, a great selfless act, and that's how tours should be run. And, and, uh, and it's, he just proves that he's just out there to have fun, and he's taking it in. He really is and enjoying it. And of all the people that I've seen out blow up like he has, he has 
completely still the exact same guy he was the day I met him in 2001. I started doing it before I headed out, you know, just because I was, right after I got married, I had to save it till I got married because I wrote it for our first dance. And I made one mistake before I got married and I was so excited I played it just acoustic one night. And my wife was like, what are you doing? That's our song for us. I'm like, uh-oh. So I was like, I won't be doing it anymore. But after we got married, I started playing an acoustic and people reacted. They loved the song, but they didn't know it. So they were hearing it for the first time. About six weeks ago, it changed. It was just like, people had heard it just a couple of times and it was on. I mean, it kind of, I could tell then that it was a different song, even than the, some of the other number ones that I've had. I think this song is just another level of connection. It really is. And now, I mean, it's to the top of their lungs from the very start to the finish. And my favorite part is, you know, I wanted it to be a really simple intro. Ding, 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 ding. And I knew that if the song was ever became a hit that that even would spark people and it does so when I start it and they hear that one lick it's like you know those songs if you hear dunk dong da 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 you know what song you're about to hear and so that's working with I don't dance and it makes me so happy because that's like what we live for you know <laughs> uh, we're doing a song called drinking class I've been doing that for two years really um, with Brad Paisley and then all through Miranda and Dirks and then out with Luke and it's my if anybody had could have found a song that we've been chasing, we've been chasing Friends in Low Places since it came out. A song like that, you know, that invites everybody in. Uh, it's kind of an anthem. And so I heard this song, I didn't write it, but I found this song called Drinking Class that really should be called Working Class because that's what it's about. And uh, it just invites everybody in and it's an anthem and it works. And then my favorite song to play live lately is a song called Good Man. And it's just the, a step ahead for me. I wanted to push some stuff. I wanted energy, but I wanted it to be, it's almost like an R&B-ish song that has nothing but country lyrics that I get to just really shotgun lyric sing on. And uh, it's really fun to play. One of my biggest influences was Garth Brooks, okay? And he, to me, in a lot of ways is like, why wouldn't you want to follow that model? He had the dance and then he had Friends in Low Places, he had The River, and he had Ain't Going Down and the Sun Comes Up. Because there's two pieces, well, I'm a Gemini, maybe that's me. I've always been more of a romantic. When I started writing songs when I was 10, I was writing dramatic, deep, you know, and then some, most love songs, you know, and I was like, I haven't seen my kindergarten girlfriend in years, you know, <laughs> when I'm 10 years old. But so then when I started playing out, getting a little older and playing out like at a party and this and that, I realized that like people want to, you know, they want to hear music that gets them moving. They want to hear music that's fun. They want to hear music that makes you want to drive down the road. So then I started diving into that. I wanted people to want to hear the whole album all the way through and not to get bored because every song is, is I mean, if I could, I might would just write every song serious and lovey and or about something serious. But uh, you gotta, I, I'm both sides. I'm a, I'm a party animal and I'm a, lover so I just got to show both sides. I actually try to make it to where it's for both and believe it or not songs like A Woman Like You or um, Hard to Love or I Don't Dance it's amazing how much guy response you get from those songs that are girly songs because the guy in A Woman Like You is like dude that's what I, that's, I would love to, that's I would love to say that exactly you figured out how to say that I, I root for you or hard to love, the dude's going, man, that's me, I'm hard to love. Or I'll dance, he's going, everybody's like me. It's like, you get asked to dance in a bar, and you're like, oh, I really, you, in his brain, he's thinking, I really want to, but I don't feel comfortable dancing, I'm not much of a dancer. Give me another shot of tequila and I'll go. Like, yes, you know, I don't dance, but I'll dance with you, even if it's uncomfortable. Like, all these, I still try to relate to me as a guy, and so, even the kind of ballad love songs, I've really been getting so much response from the guys that I feel like I'm kind of hitting them both, hopefully. <laughs>